Welcome to the Nevis Newscast. Today is Wednesday, 18th, October 2017. I'm Fredicia Leibert. The Gingerama Festival, which has as its theme reviving our culture, sustaining our heritage, will be hosted once again in December. This year, however, the festival will be hosted in the first week in December, two weeks earlier compared to 2015 and 2016. Chairperson of the Gingerama Committee, Eric Evelyn, outlined the reason for the change. We have observed over the past two years that having the festival in the middle of December, um, we've had a lot of competition from a number of other activities. Normally, once December starts, um, youth organizations, churches, um, businesses are having activities for December, for Christmas, and so that normally affects our attendance and our gate receipts. And we saw that um, incredibly um, affecting us last year. And so we made the decision to move the festival up this year and so we noticed that we're actually going having the festival in the first weekend of December instead of the third. The festival begins with its annual opening ceremony and Christmas tree lighting at the Gingerama village on Thursday 30th November. Evelyn noted that a new activity will fill the Friday evening's spot. On Friday the 1st of December um, we will be having a band and DJ night, and that is being organized by Mr. Corey Tyson and the core band. They have indicated an interest in doing something on the Friday evening, and so we have yielded to them. He's also hoping to have a regional a reggae artist um, coming in for that particular night as well. The annual Juve will take place on Saturday, 2nd November, beginning at 6 a.m. On that same evening, the Gingerama pageant will take place at the Gingerama village on then on Sunday, 3rd, which is the culmination of the festivities. The Miss Gingerbread show will take place at the Gingerama village. The chairperson also stated that this coming Saturday, October 21st, we'll see the launch of the Gingerama contestants at Market Shop in Gingerland. We will be having the reveal of the Miss Gingerama and the Miss Gingerets contestants. Um, we will be having that reveal at Market Shop starting at 1 p.m. And after the reveal of the contestants, we'll be having a motorcade through Gingerland and then making its way into Charlestown. Previously, we would have started a little later, but we noticed that we normally get into Charlestown a little late. And so we want to ensure that we get into Charlestown when persons can see the contestants, our beautiful contestants for the Miss Gingerama and the Miss Gingerettes. So um, please bear that in mind. This coming Saturday, the 21st of October, we're having the reveal of the contestants for the Miss Gingerama and the Miss Gingerettes at Market Shop at 1 p.m. And we are inviting persons to come out in their numbers as they usually do. A number of the festival's committee members were present at the press conference which took place yesterday, Tuesday, 17th October 2017. The Gingerama press conference was hosted in the Nevis Island Administration's building in Charleston. A Thanksgiving service took place earlier this week at the Flamboyant Nursing Home as part of the activities for International Month of Older Persons, which is annually celebrated in the month of October. The ceremony, filled with various song renditions, poems and dance, saw Junior Minister in the Ministry of Social Development, the Honorable Hazel Brandy Williams, speaking to persons present, encouraging them to cherish the seniors. I would like to take from this very long theme one word, and that word is contribution. If we are to enlist the many contributions made by our seniors, we will be here all day and probably all week. But I want to say that we cannot overemphasize the contributions made by our seniors to nation building. And so I would like to take this opportunity to encourage families, the community of Nevis, to continue to cherish our seniors because they are fountains of talents and knowledge. Their blood, sweat, and tears are embedded in our land so that we can have a future to appreciate. 
Minister Brandy Williams noted that it is not an easy job to take care of the seniors and on that note applauded the management and staff at the home for taking such good care of the residents. Here is an excerpt of a poem written and recited by Cheryl Sutton specifically for the residents of the nursing home. We have so much to boast about and be thankful for. We host the oldest person in the Federation. That's a mark of distinction. Our patients here, they always have fun. Whether it's just taking a walk, playing cards, domino, or getting attention, their arts and crafts will say no more. Believe it, it's off for sure. With Sister Dana at the hem, Flamboyant Nursing Home, they say it's God sent. We provide the best of care anyone can find anywhere. Chairperson of the ceremony was manager of the Flamboyant Nursing Home, Donna Hanley. A number of family members and friends of the residents were present at the ceremony. St. Kitts and Nevis's Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris, believes every child deserves the chance to grow up in an environment free of drugs and crime, an environment conducive to the development of each of their talents, and one that leads them to live, to live in healthy and productive lifestyles. The Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris, who is the lead spokesman in the CARICOM Quasi Cabinet with responsibility for health, made a passionate plea to the older persons of the community to take every reasonable measure to keep drugs out of the hands of children. In order to strengthen his plea, Dr. Harris cited information provided by the Ministry of Health that links the use of and dependence on marijuana and other drugs to mental health disorders. The Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis charged parents and guardians to take a stand in ensuring that their children are given a fair chance to reach their full potential. Still to come, annual coastal cleanup exercise deemed a success. The details when we return. Uwali, the Queen of the Caribbean, bathed by its crystal shores, is the Caribbean's best kept secret. Nevis is known for its rich culture, which remains entrenched in the island's everyday life. We boast of having the Caribbean's greatest summer festival, Culturama. The birthplace of Alexander Hamilton, my little 36 square mile island, is the home of the Bath Hotel, which is the first built hotel in the Caribbean. Don't forget to take a dip in the therapeutic Bath Springs. Take a few minutes to trot down to the ever-famous Sunshine's Bar and drink a world-renowned killer bee. Live Nevis naturally by exploring the magnificent waterfalls and hiking to the top of our 32-32 Nevis Peak. Our lush vegetation and landscape deems a visit here the perfect escape. Nevis, Queen of the Caribbean. Welcome back. St. Kitts and Nevis continues to expand its diplomatic footprint by engaging other countries around the world and forging new relations in an effort to advance a common agenda on the global stage, as well as to deepen its understanding of the diverse people and cultures worldwide. Earlier this year, the Honorable Mark Brantley, Minister of Foreign Affairs, said that as the smallest nation in the Western Hemisphere, and in a world that is increasingly hostile and difficult, it is his task to go out and make new friends and strengthen relationships with ex existing friends. Equally important, a key part of deepening bilateral relations with allied countries is the head of state's acceptance of credentials that are presented by heads of missions who visit St. Kitts and Nevis to engage with country's leadership. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Kay Bass, said that an effort is always made to get as many ambassadors as possible accredited for a number of reasons, adding that the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations is the framework agreement which governs the appointment and accreditation of diplomatic agents from one country to another. 
To date, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has approximately 50 heads of missions around the world accredited to St. Kitts and Nevis. For the first time ever, Kosovo, Guatemala, Panama, Indonesia, Qatar, and the Czech Republic accredited ambassadors to St. Kitts and Nevis. Out of those six countries, Guatemala, Panama, Indonesia, and the Czech Republic have already presented credentials, and the other two ambassadors are expected to present later this year. The Nevis Historical and Conservation Society joined the rest of the world in celebrating an International Coastal Cleanup Day on the 16th of September 2017. This year, the activity was postponed because of Hurricanes Irma and Maria, and the rescheduled date was last Saturday, 14th October 2017. Coordinator of the Coastal Cleanup, Pauline Gunjuri, outlined some of the items collected on Saturday. There are a lot of plastic bottles, a lot of pieces of plastics, fishing gear, like pieces of nets, but it appears like the, the litter has, was not as much as last year, maybe because of the passage of hurricanes this year. Gunjuri stated that there were a total of 24 groups registered compared to 22 from 2016, and they covered a total of 24 beaches on the island. She then implored persons to refrain from littering. We really appreciate the collective effort today, especially our young people. As you can see, there are very, very many young people represented here. But we are all calling on everyone, including myself, to stop to litter because what we leave, we litter gets into the sea. So we would like to see a change of behavior in the future. First time participant in the coastal cleanup on Nevis, Vernon Gibbs Halls, spoke briefly about the importance of keeping the beaches and the island clean. Our ocean is very, very precious to us and Nevis relies on tourism, so we want clean beaches. And um, yeah, we, we have to have clean beaches if we want to, to keep the tourists here. So. Yeah, that along with helping our biodiversity and ensuring that our, our reefs and our fish and our sea life and marine biodiversity is protected, we, we need to support all these initiatives, you know, to, to do that. And recycling must become a, a real big option for Nevis and St. Kitts. Um, we cannot continue to allow our plastic to pollute the oceans. This is the 25th year Nevis has been hosting the coastal cleanup. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I'm Fredicia Libert. Thank you for viewing. At a loss as to what's going on in Nevis, tune into NNC on MTV. Don't worry if you don't have cable either. NNC will bring the news to you wherever you are. Facebook and Facebook Live. YouTube and YouTube Live. NevisTVOnline.com. Roku app, NTV mobile app, Smart TV, Apple TV, and any other IPTV platforms. When me ain't see and you ain't see, NNC.